Mountain Blade II Bannerlord has a wide variety of units to help you conquer Kalradia. From the Mounted Archers of Kazate, the Imperial Legionnaires of the Fractured Empire, and the many flavors of Knights from Valandia, there are plenty of options to fill out your roster. But the question remains, what are the best units in the game? Well, right now, as you know, the game is in early access, so this subject is might be you know, a little moot, but there are absolutely some great standout units I want to go over in this video. The way I'm going to break this down is by category. We'll cover my top two picks for archers, heavy infantry, two-handed infantry, spearmen, heavy cavalry, or as I will call cav, archer cav, and throwing cav, or again, what I call skirmish cav. I'll put a table of contents in the comments below so you can quickly navigate to each category, and I do realize that some of these have a bit of an overlap, but almost every race has something in the aforementioned seven categories I just named. Also, keep in mind that this is my personal experience, and in no way depletes from the other units. And a quick disclaimer up front, there is a bit of turmoil in the community between whether or not skills actually matter for the combat effectiveness of a soldier. Some believe that it is the strictly or it is strictly valued in arena as the AI changes between the two. I will be talking about those skill scores as an additional layer of discussion, but also because I believe that the skills do matter, especially movement skills like riding or athletics. With that out of the way, let's get started with how to get some of these units real quick just in case you might not know how to access what I call the noble or the unique line from each faction. You've probably come across this in your gameplay, the Valandian Squires, Imperial Vigila Recruits, Batanian Highborn, so on and so forth. This is the unit or unit line that I've dubbed the Noble Line. It's the faction's unique line of troops that produces some of the best units in their respective field. The Fian Champion for Batania, for example. Many of you might know how to find this, but here are two quick tips on how to get them. Look for villages that have notables with power rating powerful and are landowners. This seems to be the trend to be able to recruit from a Noble Line in their respective cultures. The other tip is two-pronged. You can get the disciplinarian perk from the leadership line right here and upgrade the max tier of bandit to that culture's noble line. Take, for example, the brigand or the highwayman for um, Valandia will go into the Valandian a banner knight. Or you can place the bandit in a garrison that you own to auto level it. If you do this, I recommend a castle over a town because a town will give your bandit like 3.5 experience a day, taking 290 days to level them up. <clears throat> castles give a plus three bonus to that experience. Okay, but now that that's discussed, let's dive into this list. Our first category is archers, and archers are truly kings in the game right now. They have a disgustingly high damage output, which will probably be scaled back in patches to come, and they level up quickly because of how batch experience works and their ability to reach and damage almost any unit on the battlefield. But in my experience, the king of archers is the Fian Champion. They don't have the absolute best armor of the archer tree, but they have a longbow that they are deadly accurate with. Sieging, besieged, open field battles, you name it, the Fians will rack up kills with their accuracy and high damage output. If anyone challenges them in close combat, they'll whip out their two-handed weapon that they use at blazing fast speed because they have 220 two-handed skill. I've also found that Fians are easy to come by either directly uh, from recruiting them or converting forest bandits and using the tricks mentioned earlier. Quick heads up on this though, when you upgrade from a Fian to a Fian champion, he doesn't spawn with a two-handed weapon right now as intended, but this should hopefully be fixed soon. Second to the Fian is the Asurai Master Archer. They have a strong 160 bow skill and a really strong loadout of armor and weaponry. No other archer aside from the Fian can match that skill in bow. The Palantine Guard was close on this list, but I felt the add 20 additional bow skill meant that the Master Archer won out in the end. I say that the only downfall to the Archer is training them as the Asrai Recruit unit tree is quite difficult to wake, work your way through. But once you get down to the tier um, 5 of the Master Archer, you will not be disappointed. In addition here, they also have 130 athletics and a strong one-handed skill. So they'll be able to move quite quickly and do a lot of damage while they're moving in and out of close combat if they need to, or someone decides to scale the walls and get in their face in the event of a siege. Moving on from archers to heavy infantry. Infantry makes up the backbone of every single culture's army. Well, unless you're playing Kazate, then everything is on a horse. But heavy infantry comes in a variety of flavors, depending on the culture you wish to pull from, and the ability to access both of my top picks from just simple recruits makes them far easier to get a hold of. And I'll be honest, initially I wasn't a huge fan of the Vlandian Sergeant. 
Their picture would make you believe that they just use two-handed weapons, have no shields, and then have a mace as backup. But that is far from the case. Most units have a varying set of loadouts that they randomly are given upon upgrading. All sergeants have shields, and even some could spawn with a Volge, making them absolutely terrifying in close combat. In addition to that, they also have a mace as a secondary one-handed weapon. While the mace does have a short reach, it's devastating against other top-tier infantry as blunt damage does a higher amount of damage to heavy armor than axes or swords. Also, they can be accessed easily via Vlandian recruits or converting hillmen of the Mountain Bandits line. And again, they have a very nice stat line at 130 one-handed, 130 pull-arm, and 130 athletics. I guess the biggest shortcoming for a Vlandian sergeant is that it is topped out at tier 5. All the noble lines can go to tier 6. My other pick is the Imperial Legionary, and they've recently gotten an overhaul to their armor loadout, switching from the all-male chess piece they've used before to a nice set of lamellar. In addition to that, they are some of the easiest units to get in the game, with an overabundance of Imperial recruits through the center of the map, and a quick leveling progression, you can have a nice stack of Imperial Legionnaires in no time. Unfortunately, the Legionary does lose the throwing javelins that they have two tiers prior, so I hope that this is something that will be added in future patches because it would fit the aesthetic and make them even stronger. Lastly, looters can be converted to Imperial Infantrymen to help you get access to your Imperial Legionaries much, much quicker. Take a look here, I click there, and you can see that they will go down into Legionaries in the off chance you run out of Imperial Recruits. Our next category is the Two-Handed Infantry Soldier, and this seems a bit redundant, but there are a lot to choose from in the game, especially with some cultures having quite exceptional units in this regard. I will say up front that with the current state and power of archers, this infantry class is better used in sieges than open fields due to the lack of shields, but they can crush through tons of enemies if they get in range or are supported well with other heavy infantry and cavalry. And one of my favorite units in the entire game, Vlandian Volgier, is a monster in close combat. He's got a great amount of armor for a two-handed infantry class, a polearm to help take down cavalry, and then a two-handed weapon for when the fighting gets close. In addition, he also has a set of throwing axes that allow him to get damage in when other infantry go in to take their charge. So looking at his skills, he has 130 across all the things that matter, two-handed, polearm, and athletics, and he even has 80 throwing, so he can, like I said, do some range damage. Additionally, he's pretty easy to attain, either through the Valandian recruit line, or by converting a mountain bandit brigand into a billman, and then down into a volgier. Now, prior to patch 1.3, I would not have touched these guys with a stick. But the Sturgeon and Ulfhednar have become absolutely juiced. Rocking a tier 6 two-handed axe and a set of throwing axes, these monsters got a 50 skill bump to two-handed, putting them at 150 two-handed skill, 20 skill bump to throwing, putting it at 130 throwing, and wait for it, a 100 point increase to their athletics. They're just pure track stars now. And they are a bit trickier to keep alive with their low armor value, but with 150 athletics, they can hunt down slow cav as they outpace bottom tier riding units. I mean, the nicest thing I guess about them is that while they are from the Sturgeon recruit line and easy to access, um, keeping them alive as Sturgeon berserkers is not so difficult because they have far more armor as you can see. They can make that jump to tier 5 easier into the Sturgeon Ulfhednar. So two-handed infantry have their place, but I think that they often pale in comparison to the spearmen or shock troop category of units. This makes up the burly top tier of the Sturgeons or other heavily armored polearm and shield focused infantrymen that can hunt cavalry as well as infantry with relative ease. Now even prior to the 1.3 patch, the Sturgeon shock troop has been a standout in an otherwise underwhelming lineup for Sturgia. But many people agree that the Shock Troop it leaps and bounds above its competition. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, they can defeat any other comparable soldier of their tier. And even further, because they use a dreaded War Razor as their polearm, they can carve through elite units of elite cataphracts, even when outnumbered. 
Armed with a large round shield, which has been added in a patch recently, and a one-handed weapon, these juggernauts of Sturgia can hold the line in melee just as well against a charge of heavy horse. With 141 handed pull arm and then 125 athletics, they can truly hold the line. Now, for a faction that is centered around horses, you might be surprised to find that the Kazate Dark Hand on this list, but it's one of the best armored and more versatile units in the entire game. Uh, they're covered from head to toe in Eastern Lamellar armor, making for a clearly like WWE level terrifying visage in its own right. But their weapon deployment is amazing. They have a pole arm against cavalry, a saber with an exceptional reach against other infantry, and then Eastern throwing javelins to help pepper the foe on the charge. Not to mention a shield that will then help them take archer fire in return. Progressing them through the Kazate recruitment line uh, isn't terrible. Uh, but you will probably be very happy you did when these guys start hucking javelins before spearing cavalry to death. And even then, looking at their uh, abilities, 131 handed, 130 pole arm, and 130 athletics. That's pretty much going to match up with everything around the tier 5 level. Like I said before, your noble line pushes you into that 200 skill point bracket of, uh, well, skills. And we're mainly right now talking about these main lines. All right, now this is easily my favorite category in the game, uh, in a game called Mount and Blade. I can't resist the urge to ride down my opposition in a massive charge of Rohan through their flank with my mixed heavy cav force from some of the best mounted soldiers in the game. A truly terrifying sight to behold is a massed charge from the dreaded Imperial Elite Cataphract. These expert horsemen have some of the most impressive stat lines in the game, with 260 polearm, 200 one-handed, and again, 200 riding. They'll be able to charge quickly through infantry and then chase down enemy cav while delivering a decimating blow with the might of the cataphract's lance that they use. Their armament also sometimes includes maces, allowing them to do heavy damage to other tier 5 or even tier 6 cavalry in close quarters. The biggest challenge with cataphracts is attaining them through the Imperial Noble line, but even the tier 2 Vigila are strong infantry units that will level up quickly. And the only thing I would say is uh, the downside about the elite cataphract is something we'll talk about in the next choice. The only slightly less armored option though is the Valandian Banner Knight, and I find these guys absolutely incredible. The biggest difference, like I was saying earlier, between cataphracts and banner knights is the method in which they fight. Much like real life history, the cataphracts use a lance that does not couch, rather it use, is used two-handed to stab at the enemy. The banner knight will couch their lance and deliver a max damage blow, immediately killing almost any enemy in the game. Uh, that is if they decide not to bug out when charging and, and not actually couch their lance, but nonetheless they'll still use a lance and shield. In addition, the Banner Knight has a slightly better one-handed sword with 220 above that of the Cataphract. They're also slightly easier to get a hold of in my experience as there are more towns that offer squires than there are that offer vigilas. And lastly, you can convert mountain bandits, the highwaymen that we talked about earlier, to Valandian champions and then down into Valandian banner knights. Staying on the subject of mounted soldiers, horse archers take the speed and agility of horses and add in the overly destructive capabilities of archers, especially in the current state of the game. Without a doubt, these are hands down some of the best units in the game, as they almost always have a strong accompanying combat stat that allows them to stay alive even if they get charged. And it should come at no surprise that the first entry in this category is the Kazate Consguard. These guys are just as terrifying as the Dark Hand we talked about earlier, but there are some big marked differences. For one, they have 260 bow, allowing them to be a true harassment monster. But that's not all. They lose the shield of the Dark Hand, but trade it in for a glaive. Now, if you've not used a glaive on horseback, I cannot tell you both how satisfying and how strong it is. It will, like a couch lance, one-shot pretty much everything, without the burden of having to couch the lance. Coupled with their heavy armor and high riding skill at, a, what, a whopping 200, Kazade Consguard might be the absolute single best unit in the game in my anecdotal experience. Acquired from the uh, Kazate Noble Sun line, you can also convert the Step Bandit into a Marauder, down into a Raider, into the Kazate Keshig down to a Khans Guard. Or they can go into the Lancer category, but why are we here? We're here for the Khans Guard. Now, if the Kazate were an easy guess, then this one should be a bit of a unique one for you. The Imperial Busolarii is a bit of a left field choice, but, but hear me out on this, hear me out on this. 
They have the benefit of extremely heavy armor and a great set of stats, covering one-handed, bow, riding, and then get this, athletics. So 130, 130, 120, and 100. So when you do a siege, these guys will still be able to move around the battlefield, either as a defender or an attacker. And their heavy armor will allow them to field a pursuing charge from other cav or arrows from the enemy and relatively still make it out alive, more so than you would from other archer cav in other cultures. I'd say the only downside to the Busularii is that they need to take a long, long road as an archer on foot before they finally are able to mount at tier 5. It's really the only downside in my mind to these guys. Our last category for the day is throwing cavalry. And I think it's unfortunate to lump archer cavalry and throwing cavalry together as they have a different use as the throwing cavalry tends to rely on shorter range to get the job done, often putting themselves in danger at the same time. But there are two standout soldiers in here that are worth talking about. The Asrai Vanguard Ferris is the end-all be-all of throwing units in the game, and it fits Asrai's mechanics perfectly. High mobility and heavy throwing damage. They have a devastating skill set with over 200 skill in throwing, riding, and polearm, and still 100 skill in one-handed. What I think makes skirmish cav or, or throwing cavalry so appealing is that they are typically kitted out for a strong melee presence, and the noble line of the Asrai is not left wanting. With their strong javelins, and by strong javelins I mean the Jarid, the best javelin in the game, powerful lances, and then strong shields, these guys can deliver a ton of punishment with minimal damage to themselves. As with all tier 6 nobles, they are challenging to come across in the Asrai lands. I find most of mine in the central to eastern portions of the southern regions of the Asrai territory. With that being said though, you can also convert Arami into the Asrai Ferris, down into Veterans, and finally Vanguard Ferris to get your fill of the best throwing cav in the game. Now on the polar opposite of the geographical scale is the Sturgeon Horse Raider. I'd argue that the Ferris is more melee geared than these guys, which isn't a detractor at all. The Horse Raider has two full pouches of javelins on his back, as opposed to the Ferris's one with over eight shots to huck into the enemy during a cavalry battle or into a heavily armored front line of your enemy. Um, in addition, they have a solid amount of one-handed skill at 130 and a massive round shield to help them deal with return fire from enemy archers. Because of the fast movement speed of these guys, you can use them to help hunt down enemy mounted archers who are typically less armored and thus take a punishing from the Sturgeon Javelins. Best of all, or maybe worst of all, we'll talk about that, they're part of the Sturgeon recruit line, so finding these in mass shouldn't be too much of a challenge, but I will be transparent with you about this. I honestly believe that the Sturgeon recruit line, of all the branches, the Brigand is the hardest one to progress down, because the Woodsman is very lackluster and very hard to level up on his own. The short range of his throwing abilities means he more often than not will put himself in danger. So. Not going down the Hunter line and going down the Brigand line to the Horse Raider is a bit more of a challenge, but I think that the overall reward is a much better payoff than the Sturgeon Veteran Bowman. Well, that brings our list to a close. So whether you prefer huge infantry lines or the devastating might of a cavalry charge, you have plenty of options to choose from across the entire map of great units. Uh, I didn't want to just simply say one unit was the best, because then I'd have to, you know, just gone with all the noble lines in every respective field. Hopefully breaking the categories down like this and exploring some alternatives to the Noble Lines gives you a really good idea for what units you want to pick up next in your playthrough of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. I want to thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that fun action, and let me know in the comment section below which units you think are really big standout ones. I know that there's a hot button debate between the viability of Sturgeon Veteran Warriors versus Shock Troops. So I'd love to hear what you guys are bringing to your battles to help you grow your kingdom. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and take care.